Hi, I'm Mixisis, and this is the Great War Redux mod for Hearts of Iron 4. And we are currently playing the German Empire. And we are in the midst of a crisis, the Agadir crisis here. And we've got 62 days to resolve this. But uh, before we unpause the clock, there is uh, another issue that we want to fix of uh, utmost importance and urgency. And uh, that is uh, our construction queue. As it stands, we have the uh, SMS Friedrich de Gross and the SMS Seidlis. They are both set to be uh, launched here in the summer, or late summer. And uh, after that we've just got some submarines, some torpedo boats and uh, a few cruisers here in the queue. So we need to queue up some more capital ships of course, some more dreadnoughts. So that's where we're going to start today. We are going to select the 1910 heavy ship hull. And uh, this is obviously going to be a battleship. And uh, this is the... Uh, and the Koenig class, if you know any of your, uh, if of your World War One history, the Koenig is king, and uh, if we look at the name list, it is named after regents. We got the uh, Kaiserin and the Prince Regent Lutbold, and Koenig Albert, and uh, just Koenig. And uh, on this ship here, well, we don't have any new engines. But we do have thicker armor. So let's start off with that. It does need to be able to fend off some British shells of course. Uh, we obviously want to use our new heavy batteries that we have researched. And uh, let's uh, put a bunch on this one. Uh, I think we want to keep it to uh, about that. Yeah, that looks good. And we also want some secondary batteries. Well, the Koenig class had, uh, I believe, uh, five turrets with uh, five dual turrets. But we, we can't really add that here without it being a really weird ship. It doesn't actually add anymore. Well, I guess we could put another one on. Another one on here, but that means we it didn't actually add anything there anyway, so... Okay, now we will go with secondary batteries because we need that uh, extra light attack and it also had loads of these secondary guns. They seem to be all clustered up front here. We don't have any anti-air yet. Uh, fire control, yeah, we'll put on what we have. Uh, no sonar. So only 20 experience and uh, of course that's because we have the uh, naval arms race going. Heavy ship design cost minus 50%. That's a huge buff. So uh, here we go, the Koenig class is uh, ready to hit the water. But before we do anything, uh, let's just make sure we hit auto upgrade here because uh, that gives us a base. Uh, can we select anything fun here? No, not really. And we will uh, use this one. And the same thing here. Uh, at least this one has four. That looks like the Bismarck though. Um, Oh, uh, well, doesn't matter. Okay, so... Oh, we'll save this one. And... Uh, there were four of these ships that were launched. And they all were launched before the war. Now we don't need to do that, but we do want to do this. And of course, uh, make sure we are building lots of them. I probably want to enter... And disperse them with the cruisers here. We'll build every other one. That's fine. We do need to build more naval dockyards. I think we are going that way. Yeah, as soon as the civilian factory in Württemberg is finished, we will start building some more dockyards. And we'll keep these uh, civilian factories going, of course. Okay, so what do we want to do now? We want to set the clock in motion, of course. And we've got some Navy experience left here. Yeah, of course we're going to have uh, outdated equipment in production. 
and we've got the crisis there. What we can use this naval experience for is uh, to select the spirit of the navy. Integrated designers here is just bonkers. It's so much research speed. And just for just a tiny bit of uh, naval experience, so we will take that. We do want to get a chief of the navy in here too. All of these other ones here, well actually we could probably go for industry liaisons here too. Yeah, we've got a little bit more time there. Because I don't think we are researching any aircraft at the moment, but we are coming up to the point where we want to think about doing that. And uh, we do have some air experience. So, uh, uh, air crew service I would like otherwise, but uh, industry liaisons it is. That extra research speed is good. Okay, so we finished our agency. That's good. We need to wait another 30 days. And the question is if we want to... No, we want to keep those uh, factories down here, constructing dockyards now, I think. And uh, we need to unpause though. And here we can select the Chief of Navy. So we finish the Agadir Crisis too, and that means we can uh, solve this. France wishes to expand their colonial empire further into the Morocco. We must make a public show of strength and demand that France allow us a piece of the newly acquired territory. So this increases royal tension and we gain a bunch of flame, uh, claims. And uh, France gets the event that our fleet has arrived in Agadir. Now we are free to keep on going the way we want to go. So we will uh, go with the German-Austrian joint staff. Now we now have 79 days and uh, we need to send some demands of course off to France. So uh, uh, we can unclick this button and uh, we want to select this one. We demand compensation. So we have sent off our demands off to France. That's a submarine of repairing I guess. The Agadir crisis. It seems that Germany entered the struggle for Morocco. The cruisers Berlin and Panther arrived at the port of Agadir, demonstrating the willingness of Germany to begin an intervention in Morocco. Germany intends to receive part of the Moroccan colonies or compensation for the French intervention, which uh, violates the Algeciras Treaty. European powers are preparing for the worst. Get your popcorn. And uh, we also have the financial crisis here that kicks off. In the midst of this Agadir crisis, we are hit by financial turmoil. The stock market plunged by 30% in a single day, and the public started cashing in currency notes for gold. And there was a run on the banks. The Reichsbank lost a fifth of its gold reserves in one month. It is rumored that the French finance minister had orchestrated this crisis. Should we back off a little? And uh, this one reduces our stability by 5 and increases our consumer goods factories by 10%. Which of course is uh, not very good when we are trying to build our dockyards to build more dreadnoughts. So we have sent off our demands and we're waiting for the French return. Let's get rid of this one for now. Uh, that one too. Uh, that one too I guess. And uh, this one. The Agadir crisis averted. The crisis is over. France has ceded some territories of the French Congo to Germany in compensation for the events in Morocco. This time the powers didn't argue, despite that the negotiations were quite tense. The German diplomats considered to the transferred regions unsuitable for colonization. Colonial war was avoided, however. This means only one thing. War will inevitably happen in the near future. Interesting development. So we got rid of the financial crisis idea that we just had, which is of course is good. And uh, they handed over some of uh, Congo to us. 
I still think we keep our defensive line where we are. The new territories here don't seem to hold that much of use. We might want to look into what we are doing down here though. So we can... Uh, I should uh, remove it, yeah. France will pay for Morocco. France agreed to settle the conflict peacefully and transfer part of the French Congo in compensation. Due to fear of risk of large-scale war, we will have to be content with what our diplomats managed to get. Yeah, fine. And uh, that's the uh, two territories that we got from that. And these events are a little bit random. I think you can get Morocco too as a puppet if you're really lucky. But we, we get what we get. We got some, some territory out of it all. And uh, we did avoid another war, of course. So we have some troops we can deploy. Now I think we will wait for the entire army to be filled out first. Let's check our occupation laws. Okay, so everything is on civilian oversight, of course. What are we doing for compliance in all of these different states? 4044, yeah, we're doing well on compliance, so we can uh, we can keep it on civilian oversight for now. Uh, resistance is super low. It's only here in the new republics that we've got a little bit. Okay, we can recruit our operative. And... Uh, we do have a few good ones, but I think Emma Erler. Oh, actually, I think uh, Matahari is the first one we go with. But before we get to pick her, uh, Machu Picchu has been uncovered. Machu Picchu, the grand estate of the Indian king Pachachuti, has been found. Last inhabited around 1550. It has rested nearly untouched by the world community until its rediscovery by the American explorer Herman Bingham. The Peruvian government is gleefully preparing for an influx of easily taxed tourists. That is amazing. So we pick up Mata Hari here. As a French national, of course, uh, what better place to have her in than in Paris? We do want to increase our agency to the point where we can have at least two agents. We can have one over in England as well. And we would preferably have one in Rome and one in uh, Moscow too. Actually, St. Petersburg is uh, where we want, we want to be. That, of course, is the, uh, the current capital of uh, Russia. Uh, how are we doing for fighters? We're doing okay. We do have some recon planes here too. We might want to build an airport a little bit closer to the front. We we'll probably want to have one over here somewhere too in a noise. How are we doing on the eastern front? Yeah, I think we're, we're fine for airports here. Got one here in Posen. Uh, we might want to have one up here in... Uh, Schleswig or Schleswig, uh, Northern Schleswig. The air zone seems to be mostly the same as in Vanilla. Except that the Eastern Union, yeah, East Germany. Okay, that's a huge one. This one should have been split up into two, I think. Oh well, uh, that's the way it is. Okay, so we've got our airports. That means we can use our reconnaissance planes. I think they are already flying in France, but let's uh, move them up a bit. Okay, so we unlocked support weapons. Let's see where we want to go next then. So these are 19, 12 techs. We are still ahead of time. 14 for the motorized, 14 for anything here. Well, we could go for armored trains. I think we are probably wise of building civilian trains for a little while longer. So we have a stockpile of them for when the inevitable strikes. Uh, it's way too early to delve into tanks. Uh, same thing with upgrading our mortars or artillery. And uh, 
I'm gonna wait for some research bonuses for things here. And I think we are mostly done there. 600 days for fighters, that is a little bit on the long side. And the same thing here, there's nothing really that is in time. Industry, yeah, same, same thing goes for industry. So I think what we can do is start working on our damage control methods. Now, do we want to spend the naval experience for this? And the answer to that question is uh, yes, I think. That is a lot of research time we do spend. And these uh, don't actually have any uh, time on them. So you can just uh, keep going at them. So we have the experience. We will use the experience. We don't need uh, that much experience at the moment. This, of course, also is helped by the integrated designers. Only 20% bonus to that. The... Uh, well, 40% will be given if we go for it. No, it's only 20% here too. Now some, some of these you get. Or maybe they fix that now. now it's, uh, it's one for... Yeah, there we go. Okay, so it's one for modules and one for ships. But it still is 20% research bonus. We will want to get a ship designer in here sooner rather than later too. We don't need the industrial concern just yet. The theorist we don't need just yet either. It's going to be Falkenhain of course. Armor designer, no. I'm probably going to go with a chief of... We could select the chief of navy. Who do we want to have as chief of navy? Do we want... Extra naval experience. Or do we want commerce raiding? We probably want to have turpits actually. And then we need to go down naval supremacy. Yeah, we're going to hold off on this a bit. We can't change our any of our laws just yet. Well, we could go to extensive conscription, but that's not worth it. We need 25, uh, world, or 25 world tension before we can go for partial mobilization. Uh, it would be nice to get an air designer in or a ship designer in. Uh, we will keep going a little bit there. Uh, let's see if we can put some... Yeah, we've got some recon aircraft going down here. So the German-Austrian joint staff has finished. The Austrian military is in a pitiful state. We will send them generals to improve their forces. And at the same time we will be able to manipulate their operations. So we unlock the Austrian uh, planning decisions. And uh, now we want to pop over to the other side of the tree again. And uh, we're going to claim Middle Africa. We got a lot of new colonies down there, of course. So uh, let's, uh, let's keep this going. Let's see, maybe we can actually put up some more reconnaissance planes over France. Might as well wonder, I wonder, if we put up a reconnaissance wing here too. Uh, we could have used a quick deploy. And uh, I think we will just fly daytime. Wish you could set this as a standard option. Uh, most of the time you only want them flying daytime, of course. Can we get any more zeppelins out? Uh, that's all. Let's set these zeppelins to daytime operations and to exercising. Now we can probably wait until this wing has filled out before we start exercising those again. I think we probably want to split off a bit of this fleet if we if we are split this we split them both into half. And we do the same thing here, naval exercises. We are getting up there on uh, command power again. How was our, are we done with our generals? Check the garrison ones. Now we can probably check for some traits down here. Uh, I 
I think Charismatic might be the better one here. These are mostly for defending, so recovery rate is good, of course. As soon as they manage to win a battle, they want to recover their organization quickly. And down here we've got August von Mackensen. No, he's only got cavalry at the moment, but I think we want to go for combined arms here. Now, once we start getting that, we will uh, leave that for now. And uh, well, they shouldn't be. How many are you? No, this is over in in uh, China, I think. Don't think we need to put too much energy into him. And over here are our home garrisons, right? Under von Kvast. Yeah, there we go. And von Kvast... No, we don't need the entrenchments. These are mostly port guard divisions. We do, however, probably want to see if we can put some... Could we put some support artillery in here? What would that cost? We have almost enough to do this. And I think this is a worthwhile upgrade. And it gives them a little bit more punch. The howitzers would be even better, but howitzers we don't have enough of. Actually, we do. And that would make their... Yeah, I think this, this is actually probably a good one. And being able to having a lot of soft attack on your defending divisions of course means you manage to knock down the enemy's organization quicker and i think that's a good use of those howitzers we will of course be using them in other areas too but we'll, we'll start out there with the i should strip and uh, yeah, we can uh, get rid of that one. So we've got the infantry divisions here. What do we want to do here? We probably don't want to. We want to add reconnaissance to these. There's a lot of defending going on in in World War One. So a lot of your battles are going to be defensive, which means that the recon bonus is uh, extra valuable here. Since it's uh, going to end up to be an attritional war, most likely. Um, let's pop over to our navy. And see if we can give Franz von Hipper something to... Something fun here. So safety first is really good. A chance to receive critical hits. I probably want to have... Yeah, Crisis Magician is probably better. We have a, a lower amount of ships than our enemies, or potential enemies. So having less uh, less critical hits is better than scoring more of them. We obviously want to have a big guns expert too, but that's not something we can get just yet. He needs to level up first. Then we've got Von Paul, who's got... One submarine, where are the rest? One task force, we've only got two. Did we forget to put them on? Yeah, that's it. Um, reveal chance or screen penetration. Now, screen penetration sounds really good. The screen penetration is really low to start with, so Silent Hunter is the better pick, at least in my opinion. And I think we want to go with Loading Drill Master. That will allow us to unlock a Torpedo Expert we need for submarines. Now we can actually go for both of these, but we want to go for Torpedo Expert first. We can actually pick the other one too. Let's grab them both. Torpedo cooldown means this is roughly 33% more damage. Since the cooldown is reduced from 4 hours to 3 hours. So that's a really good trait. Yeah, hit chance, of course, is good as well. But we took the this one is better than this one, I think. Uh, but we want to have a 
submarine specialist. Now we can't assign him just yet. We need a little bit more command power. But uh, we can see here we have some accidents. We haven't lost any it looks like. Oh yeah, we split two submarines off down here too. Yeah, uh, that's where they went to. Uh, let's get the new submarines in there too. And our new ships can... Well, let's put them into... Not that one. I want to put them into it there. And these are... Why aren't these out training? Uh, we want to have automatic split off on... Actually on all of these. If they don't already. There we go. And these are our torpedo boats. They are all... All trained up. That's good. They can uh, keep training for a bit more. That, uh, this, this is giving us loads of experience. Let, uh, let the clock run again. That's so cool when you see these zeppelins flying around. Uh, of exercising of course and then we got the biplanes off here the recon planes that's a little bit of a late war one it's a albatross isn't it and uh, let's see how we were on post we're building dockyards full steam ahead that's good could probably be building some more military factors. Yeah, we are bumping up the artillery production. Let's put another one in on howitzers. And we can increase production to three there. And so we still got the sailits left. We are producing armored cars without any use for them. That's fine. We're going to put them into our motorized divisions when we get that far. We are starting to stockpile motorized. This, of course, is used for uh, all logistics. Mona Lisa has been stolen. Last night, a thief has stolen the famous Mona Lisa from the Louvre. This morning, Louise Perrault walked into the Salon Car portion of the museum, where the Mona Lisa had been on display for five years, only to find four iron pegs on the wall. Local guards claim that the art was being photographed, which uh, turned out to be untrue. Currently, the museum is closed for investigation. He just walked away with it. Well, fun, these events. I like that they have this, this small historical flavor of things that actually happened in the, uh, in the period. Alright, so we, we finished our pre-war artillery here. And... Uh, we are in this kind of slump here where everything we try to research is ahead of time. Maybe we could... No. See, it's like four, 400 days. It's 600 days. It's We could go for carriers, but no. I think the Germans did have a couple of float plane carriers, but no real flat tops. Well, I guess we could go for bracket shooting. Yeah, we're not really ready to start uh, going into aircraft. Nor amplitude magn magnification. Nothing here is on the table. Yes, it, well, we could do fortifications, but I don't think we're going to be building that much forts. Trains. Yes, we want the trains, but we don't want to make the switch just yet. These are... These are okay to do. That's only a third of a year ahead of time. And this increases supply usage. Okay. Uh, that's, uh, that's not very good, but that's, uh, that's the way it is. And uh, no, we can't put turbids in charge here just yet. Yeah, we, yeah what we can do is... Uh, let's see. We had... Von Paul down here, and Von Paul is going to be a submarine specialist. We can promote him so we don't forget to do this. Yeah, we don't want Hipper to have either of those roles. 
And do we have anything fun we can spend our... No, we're gonna need the command power for the pointing... No, it's only 10 we need for turbits. Maybe we can spend a little here. And what are you commanding? You are commanding just a fleet. I probably want to have a look down here at Henning von Holtz. Or Holtz Solder. And uh, you can go for a sided hunter here as well. And we will go for a loading drill master. We can modify our government. Finally, we can do something. And... Uh, well, I think the only wise thing or only real thing we could do, we could go for infantry equipment, I guess. But it's not going to be that helpful. Uh, we'd like to get Fokker, but Fokker is loft, uh, locked behind uh, a few other things there. Could get Albatross or Algemin Elektricitets Gesselschaft. Uh, we're not going to go for close air support, I don't think. Luftschiff Bau Zeppelin. No, we want to, we want to go with Fokker. Uh, we will pick up the Kaiserlich Werft Wilhelmshaven. That will uh, help a little bit with our naval research speed. And it will also make our capital ships better once we start making them. Or if we refit them to put any anti-air on. Okay, so we're soon done with all of these troops here. Uh, Seidlitz is it's about to launch tomorrow. That's perfect timing. Let's uh, have our submarines go into the U-Boat Flotte. We can probably have our destroyers go into the uh, Aufklärungsgruppe. Or torpedo boats. That's a clearing clearance group, I guess. Mm. Yes, we have them going into something useful. And we have launched another torpedo boat. Let's have you join up with the rest and keep training. Yeah, slowly, slowly, slowly. How are we doing for intel on uh, France? I yeah, can't do that from the naval screen. We're getting a little bit here from air, air intel. That's nice. You can see what they're up to. And they got a lot of factories them too. And we have... No, we can't really see what kind of navy they have. Yes, yeah, so they have uh, about 140 ships, I guess. 40, 150. You seem to have, well, I'd guess, 15 battleships. That's the big number to keep track of. And while the British, we can't really see anything. They've got a few battle cruisers, but they have 44 to 74 battleships. That's just a, a, such an insane amount. Now, granted, most of them are crap like most of ours, but that's the way it is. The Stolypin assassination. The Russian Prime Minister Pyotr Stolypin died after the assassination attempt several days earlier. A member of the Ministerial Guard attacked him in the Kiev Opera House, where the minister was with Emperor Nicholas Romanov. The terrorist was caught on the spot, and the royal family was not injured and is safe. As Prime Minister, Stolypin had tried to turn the Russian peasantry into prosperous independent small farmers who would be grateful and loyal to the imperial regime. He also became famous for his methods of struggle with opposition and had so many accused rebels hanged that the news acquired the nickname of Stolypin's necktie. He was proud to serve the Tsar. Oh, those, uh, some of those events are really hard to read out loud. <laughs> I'm gonna stumble on the words. Okay, so. The world events unfold. The uh, Ottoman Empire, of course, controls all of, no all of North Africa here. And uh, well, Italy seems to have made a landing in Benghazi. The Italian invasion of Libya. 
an ultimatum was presented to the Ottoman government. Through Austrian intermediation, the Ottomans replied with a proposal of transferring control of Libya without war, maintaining a formal Ottoman suzerainty. The Italians refused, and war has now declared. A war for a piece of sand? And a lot of these wars, of course, uh, resolve themselves. Uh, Italians here will uh, will invade and at least change change the map quite a bit. How are we doing over here then? Uh, it looks like uh, there is a border war going on here. And over in Asia, yeah, nothing, nothing really is going on. We've got a bunch of colonies over here too in the Caroline Islands and uh, Saipan and Marcus Island. Uh, see, see where the next owner got them all from. And we've also got, of course, the Bismarck Sea here uh, because all of these uh, colonies are German. But uh, yeah, Middle Africa, we have uh, claimed it. It is uh, ours. No, not really. But uh, the Western powers have an unfair monopoly over Africa. And we will announce claims on regions in Central Africa. So we uh, unlock a different uh, decision to form Middle Africa. And uh, we gain loads of claims. Uh, which of course is good. Uh, next up, we are going towards uh, naval supremacy. This will allow us to select Turpits as uh, high command and also unlock these two divisions. That's a lot of dockyards. That's a grand total of seven dockyards, ripe for the taking. So I think uh, we can't see this decision until we've actually... I mean, we just need to do that. But we, I think we need to own a lot of Central Africa here. Which of course is possible. That's good. We're starting to construct our capital ships here now. And we do need a lot of these uh, torpedo boats and submarines too. I thought we moved these over. Maybe not. West Africa Geschwader. Let's put one over here. Because why not? Okay, so we got the Seidlitz. Let's get... Uh, let's put Seidlitz into one of these other ones. Because these should soon be done. Yeah. We do have the fuel. So let's uh, send out another one of these uh, battleship squadrons. We will uh, put them all together in the... In a little bit. I can hear the trains tug tugging around. Okay, so we unlocked firefighting grills. Where do we want to go to next then? Oh, yeah, still a long time for aircraft. Well, we should be quite okay here. And could spend some experience and pick something up here. Might be a good idea. That was way ahead of time. The other thing there is trains and infantry equipment. Infantry equipment, we will just swap over that way. Yeah, let's keep going on on this here, but we will save the experience this time. The Treaty of Auchi. Italian diplomats decided to take advantage of the situation to obtain a favorable peace deal. Today, the Kingdom of Italy and the Ottoman Empire signed a peace treaty in Auchi in Lausanne. The main provisions of the treaty were as follows. The Ottomans would withdraw all military personnel from Trebius and the Benghazi Vilayets, Libya. But in return, the Kingdom of Italy would return Rhodes and the other Aegean islands that it held to the Ottomans. Trabulus and the Megasi Villets would have a special status as the Naib regent and Kadi Yudj, who would represent the Caliph. Before the appointment of the Kadis and Naibs, the Ottomans would consult the Italian government. The Ottoman government would be responsible for the expenses of these. 
um, something something. And the eagle pecks at the corpse. And uh, that means that the Ottoman Empire and the Kingdom of Italy have uh, signed a white peace or a scripted peace. Uh, since uh, most of the wars up until the First World War were of the uh, type where once the war goals were ceased, uh, uh, and so something happened down in uh, the king. We'll get an event about this too, I guess. Oh, here we go. So the Singhai Revolution. Discontent with the rule of the Qing dynasty and the opposition to reform. Revolutionaries led by Li Yuanhong have risen up to the province of Hubei. Although small, they have managed to repel counterattacks from the new army. In addition to Hubei, the Bogd Khanate and the Urukai Republic have declared their independence to the north. In other areas of the dynasty, local leaders have begun declaring independence and fighting local garrisons. The strength of the Di dynasty is weaker than ever, and the international observers are unsure if the dynasty will be able to subdue the revolutionaries. Uh, this better not affect the price of tea. And we get another one of these really nice pictures. There's a train in the midst of everything here. If the idea of revolution is to win out, it must be through political enlightenment. It is useless to try to impose it by force of arms. Sun Yat-sen. Min Su Min Shang Min Sheng. Yeah, most of the wars up until World War One were fought over a war goal, and once that war goal was reached, the powers uh, kind of broke it, broke it out to peace deal and stopped fighting. And it wasn't until World War One that you really got the notion of total war that Hoi Four is built on. So of course they had to script all of these white peace deals all over the place. Might be possible with the new peace conference system actually to make it a little bit nicer, but. It works out for us anyway, because we'll end up at a, a good spot here in a bit. How are we doing for deploying our troops? No, they are not ready just yet. Let's see if we can do it this way instead then. How many are we allowed to add? Yeah, we can add another one there. Okay, so it thinks that we've run out of manpower. Uh, this just means that uh, we can start collecting up our equipment here. Okay, we're actually short of infantry equipment. Oh, I could probably have checked on this before. Yeah, oh, we need loads of infantry equipment now. Mm, we are getting a few more factories, but I think uh, we want to have another few more. Let's uh, pop two in there and bring them up. Uh, we, and we want to build some more dockyards. Yeah, why not? I'll uh, fill out our dockyard capacity. Uh, Navy is a very important part of World War One. Yeah, air doctrine really nice, but uh, we don't need the doctrine just yet. We want to switch, uh, switch over here, of course, to aircrew service before we start taking any doctrines. Uh, well, no, we can't take turpits just yet. But I think uh, this is where we take our leave for today. So thank you very much for watching. Take care and see you next time.